Oh, let's try this. So what's the name of this substituent? Isopropyl. Right. Oops. So a good way to start here is by naming both of these substituents. This is not just a propyl group, it's an isopropyl group. Because the, the propyl group is itself branched. If it was just a propyl group, it would look like this. Mm. This would be n-propyl. Alright, now there's two different ways to number here. We can number clockwise or counterclockwise, and those are really tied. Because if you number in one direction, you'll get the locators 1 and 3. And if you number in the other direction, you'll get the locators 1 and 3. Mm -hmm. So who should we give the lower number to, the isopropyl or the methyl? Because it comes first in alphabetical order. And we do count iso when we're alphabetizing things. That's important here, because P comes after M, but I comes before M. So the iso is part of the name of this uh, substituent, unlike sec and tert, which would, not, which would be attached by dashes. So we should start the numbering over here. So is the going to be the only one we use for the alphabetizing then? Mm -hmm. okay. The only uh, prefix, yeah. The other prefixes that you learned um, are the numerical prefixes in second tert. All those numerical prefixes don't get included. That's right. So this is one iso for three and a half. Oh, cyclo! Right. Darn it! Because <laughs> it's a ring. So Okay, so you can see here that it's good to start by just writing down the names of the substituents because otherwise you can't start doing the alphabetization, which you need. So in this case, we, uh, in fact, you have to do that even before you put in the numbers. In this case, you have to write down the names of the substituents before you put in the numbers. So you've got to watch out for these branched substituents, um, and you have to be able to tell them apart from the regular substituents. So one isopropyl, three methyl, methyl cyclohexane. Sure if I follow you there. Well, no, I, I guess I'm just confused. Like, oh man. 
So what's the name of the parent chain here? Cyclo-3 chain. Good, you got that. All right, and how many substituents are there on the parent? Two. That's right. What's the name of this substituent? Uh, how many carbons are there in this substituent? Two. So and what do we call a substituent? Ethyl. All right, so the name of that substituent is ethyl. Okay, I got that part. All right, and what's the name of this substituent? Three propyl. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, I, it seemed like you were trying to like take this to pieces or yeah. um, look at more details than we really need yeah. uh, in this case. Right. Maybe this confused you because uh, I've been using so much bond line notation that this condensed notation, we, which we haven't talked about much, was confusing you. But there's a total of three carbons in this substituent, so that's simply a propyl group. Right. Oh, and that should be the Now it looks like you numbered clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Why is it better to number clockwise here and not counterclockwise? Yeah. Either way, you're going to get a 1 and a 2. Either way you number, you're going to get a 1 and a 2. So when we have a tie in the numbering, then we use alphabetical order to break that tie. So we want to give the, the smaller number to the thing that comes first in alphabetical order. That's why we had to put in the names of the substituents even before we could put in the numbers here. Sounds good. You remember the cyclo? That's good. By the way, this is one word. You don't need to put any space between the propyl and the cyclo. It's one word, propyl, cyclo. Okay. So that's right. One ethyl, two propyl, cyclobutane. Okay. Well, I guess that's as much time uh, as we got. So um, we talked about uh, the naming for alkanes. And um, we also talked about the systematic method for doing the um, isomers. Uh, the alkanes uh, as well, and we learned how to work with the bond line notation. Uh, so as usual, I would recommend going back and redoing on your own all the questions we just did. Um, just go back and redo those, uh, covering up the answers hopefully, and make sure that you can actually get those right on your own. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.